In our uh, proposed uh, draft tight lands ordinance, um, I wanted to just say a few words about uh, how it came about. Um, uh, for many years, uh, you know, the really not had a specific ordinance dealing with uh, management uh, and regulate. We should begin looking at that issue and saying, well, uh, an ordinance basically clarifying here's where the line is where uh, below mean high water is and where the tribe owns the tidelands uh, in most cases around the reservation with one uh, exception and uh, to set out uh, uh, some rules and a process that would uh, allow people to uh, do leasing uh, of those uh, tidelands because we really didn't have a, a, a specific process that even allowed that to take place there are a number of encroachments on those tribally owned tidelands and the tribe really didn't have a process to allow that to continue so what uh, this will do among other things is allow people to be able to come in uh, and figure out okay can we uh, can leave our structure in place and pay a lease fee or does that structure need to be removed um, what we would hope to do uh, through this process is, is review each of those uh, individual structures that are uh, in trespass on tribal tide lands and, and figure out, you know, can we leave them or is there environmental problems with that? Can they be modified? That sort of thing. So really what it does is clarify tribal ownership uh, and where that line is and set out a process. The other thing I believe people have been uh, a little concerned about is uh, the whole licensing thing and, and whether you need a uh, a license to recreate on, on tribal tidelands. Um, I think that's something that needs a, a lot of clarification in the ordinance uh, in that uh, I think people um, people might think that uh, that this is going to be closing the tribal tidelands so that you can't recreate on them uh, without a license. What this really does is set up a process where the uh, tribal tidelands are divided into a number of sections and then they, each of those sections have a letter uh, so that we can uh, know what we're talking about. And then by tribal resolution, the Senate can open or close those particular areas um, and not have to go back every, you know, every time they might want to make some change and, and change the whole ordinance. Um, but the initial ordinance comes with a uh, a particular, you know, the draft ordinance also has a draft resolution with it that opens up and either opens or closes or whatever certain of those areas. And so, just to sort of set people's mind at ease, in particular, all the areas that you see in green here in the initial resolution that goes along with the ordinance, um, uh, you know, assuming again all this draft passes in the current form, those areas would all uh, continue uh, to be open to uh, recreation. You can go out there without a license, you know, walk along the beach, all that sort of thing. So it will not, uh, it doesn't require a license or a lease or anything to, to recreate on those lands. Uh, there are several areas uh, in yellow which um, because of lease or other agreements of particular facilities, uh, Kukatali Reserve or Ticket Island State Park, depending on the perspective, uh, Thousand Trails, where we are here, um, or Martha's Bay, which is which is part of the lease agreement uh, with Shelter Bay, uh, are all areas where the people who are either patrons of, I guess in the case of here, or residents of, in the case of Shelter Bay, kind of automatically with the with the lease that they have on the upland are already included in that. So so those are called as areas which are open to the particular patrons sort of through the lease agreement. There are some closed areas uh, that are being um, uh, proposed uh, under the resolution that goes with this uh, ordinance. Um, but as you can see there, you know, on the west side, they're not that extensive. Really, it, it closes a lot of the area uh, along uh, the channel, but most of that is all travel uh, owned, and there's not many residences over there. Uh, and not only on um, so for the purple areas, if you were to be recreating in those areas on the tidelands, not not driving the boat down the channel, but like you know, <coughs> recreating on the tidelands, uh, you would need to get the the license that we're talking about. Um, so it sets up a process to allow uh, people to get those too. And that way, we can control access to some areas. For instance, we uh, I think the tribe was talking about controlling access to this area. Uh, 
in part at least, because there are archaeological uh, sites and things on, on a few of the outer islands there, and they wanted to have some better way to, to control that. So those are some of the examples of, of what we're talking about. What I would like to do, too, is, I uh, can't even see everybody here, would, uh, how about we go around in, in any of the um, other tribal staff that are, have any, uh, any uh, questions? Um, you know, I, the idea of this was sort of to be kind of an open house where we could circulate around, look at some of the, whether the, the tribe would wish to give you a lease or, or whether we would, the tribe would say, we don't want that structure to remain, it needs to be removed. Both of those options are there. Uh, as, in, as in any case where someone owns land, they can make well, a decision on whether or not they want a structure or not. Could you, maybe one of your returns, explain how you own the land? You want to do that? Um, <laughs> the, um, as a lot of you may know this, but the reservation was established in a treaty in 18... 55. Uh, sorry, the re reservation was first established by treaty with the United States in 1855. Um, in 1873, um, President Grant issued an executive order which clarified the boundary of the reservation. And the executive order says the boundary runs to the low water mark. Um, in 1907, there was a federal court case over who owned lands below mean high tide, and the court held that those lands were held by the tribe as part of the reservation um, from mean high tide down to the low water mark. Um, in the 1930s, I think 1936, there was a state Supreme Court decision which came to the same conclusion and held that given the way the reservation was created and the executive order, that the tribe owned tide lands from mean high tide down to extreme low water in that case. Wasn't that particular uh, opinion by the Washington State Supreme Court only apply to that one particular person and the one particular, doesn't it say on, on page uh, 469 in the last sentence that this only applies to this one case and don't try to make it apply to everything? Well. It, Every court case applies only to the parties in front of the court. Um, but the principles that the case was based on, as well as the 1907 federal case, um, were based on the executive order and the creation of the reservation before statehood and the explicit inclusion in the executive order of all lands down to the low water mark. Um, there are cases on the Lummi Reservation, which confirm in similar circumstances tribal ownership of tidelands, including a case decided in the Federal Court of Appeals a couple years ago. Um, there are cases on the Squaxin Island Reservation um, and other Washington reservations where in these kind of similar circumstances where you have a specific reference to low water that the tribe owns the tidelands. And there's a series of <coughs> opinions that have been issued by the United States Department of the Interior based on these cases that come to that conclusion. So, um, you know. Is it, is it owned by the tribe or is it owned by the Department of the Interior and trust for the tribe? It's, it, our view is that it's owned by the Department of the Interior, the United States and trust for the tribe. Okay. And being as that's, that's a government of, of representation, wouldn't it be better for the Department of the Interior, if this is all necessary, wouldn't it be better for the Department of the Interior to issue whatever rules are necessary that would actually apply equally to all people? Okay, let me, there's, could you have a question back yeah, here and then I'll come back to well, that. It's my understanding that the, the Thailand issue has never been solved. It's you, the tribes that claim that it's held in trust for them, but it's still working its way through the courts. Now, it's interesting to me that we kick an island in 2010 that if you did indeed claim you owned the Thailand, I'm surprised why the government, or why the governor of the state of Washington deeded those to you directly. Yeah. If you already supposedly it's, 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 a, it's a recorded deed that's got you coming. Yeah, we, um, I mean, why, we throughout, those, throughout those discussions, we took the position that the tribe owned the Thailands. Well, why and, 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 and the reason we did that was because the former owners of Kicket Island 
were claiming they owned the Thailands. Correct. They and we told the state that as part of any transaction, we wanted to resolve the issue once and for all as to Kicket Island. And that deed was intended to resolve the issue once and for all. There was no consideration that went to the state for that deed. The state, the state said, we agree with you and we'll issue this deed so that there's never a question about it again. So that was why that was done, was to, to clarify what we, what, what we were saying all along, which was that we own the Tideland. But um, the, as the, the federal government owns the Tidelands. You are claiming that you, they own them in trust for you to manage. Right. But I am claiming that the federal government owns them. There's never been any documentation that they have are holding them in trust for you to manage. Okay, well, um, as, 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 you know, all, all, I can, all I can tell you is what our position is based on. You, don't have, you obviously don't have to agree with our position. Right. But our position is based on the 1855 treaty, the 1873 executive order, right, the 1907 federal court decision, Corrigan versus Brown, the 1936 state court decision, State versus Edwards, and about a dozen opinions from the Department of the Interior. Um, and, you know, nobody has to agree with us, but that's, that's what we're relying on. Um, as to how the government should manage these lands, um, the government holds lands, this, I'm trying to respond to the question up in the front about what the government should do. Um, the government holds lands and trust for Indian tribes all over the country. Um, the tribe is the beneficial owner of those lands. The government has a policy of respecting tribal self-government and allowing tribes to manage lands that are held in trust for tribes. And so that's the, you know, that's the basic framework that we're operating under here. Um, those lands are not held for, for everybody. They're not, it's not like um, Yellowstone National Park um, that's held for all citizens of the United States. Those lands are held, specific, trust lands are held specifically for a particular tribe. Uh, why does the state issue the, issue titles that include the title lands then? I mean, Washington State must believe at some point that they are entitled to the title lands because there are, Kicket wasn't the only one where the state issued the, the uh, titles along with the title lands to land. Well, there, were, there, there was no state title uh, issue for Kicket. Um, the, there, were, there are two or three cases where the state conveyed title lands surrounding the reservation. Um, Nothing since State versus Edwards in 1936, um, and um, no claim by the state that it owns the Tidelands, no attempt to manage the Tidelands, no attempt to lease lands on the Tidelands ever since then. Um, before that time, there were some questions, and from time to time, some state officials thought they owned the Tidelands or didn't research the question. Um, so there were some deeds issued, and we think they were mistaken. I have a question. Some of these structures uh, I know were permitted by Skagit County and through the memorandum of understanding uh, with the tribe, they allowed certain structures to be permitted and built and that would fall that. under this situation. So are we to say now that the memorandum of understanding is gone? No, the, the memorandum of understanding deals specifically with uh, non-Indian owned fee simple lands within the reservation um, and therefore if you're dealing with a structure that is on uh, tribal trust lands then the MOU does not apply so anything they issued on that it would be like someone issuing a permit for someone to build a house that then turned out to be not on their land but someone else's land it's like, oops, they shouldn't but, have issued that. But when, when you read the, the uh, charter here, or whatever it is, um, it talks about you know man-made structures or fill. And if that is then removed, if you get if require that to be removed, and the, the uh, tide comes in and starts hitting a structure that was permitted by Skagit County under that uh, memorandum of understanding, I mean, uh, how does that work? I mean, basically, the Skagit County gives you a permit, you build something, and uh, now after this ordinance goes through, you you know, I, you know, could uh, go along and say every one of these bulkheads and every one of these dikes and everything else, I mean, we, we have no control whatsoever. But obviously, the tribe is going to say whether they come or go, 
And for for the for yeah. those structures which are on tribal tide lands, that is true. The but, tide the, the tribe will ultimately I'm be the decision. Structures that aren't on tide lands are on dry land at this point, and it's subjective. If you remove a bulkhead or a dike or a, a berm or something like that, and all of a sudden now it's tide lands and there's structures there. Oh uh, well, that like wouldn't matter. Shorewood, for okay, instance. let me let me address that one as well. That wouldn't really matter in the end um, because. Um, it's the Milner case. The, the kind of a situation where you're talking about there's somebody who had a, a structure that was keeping the mean high water from going where it would naturally go. And in fact, the federal court case said that um, mean high water is ambulatory and it's where it would go without the interference yeah. of a man made structure. See, so that's that's what worries me. There's many structures in this reservation that would then be affected, and property and value of property and so on. And the the other one comment or question I have is I, you know, he pointed out that uh, C and E and F and G. I guess anyone can you know still walk on the beach or whatever without a leaf. But that's that's subjective. You know, the tribal senate at any given time can take that away. Once the structures, this ordinance is put into place, the next day they could say, well, we changed our mind. Is that not true? That is true. What's wrong with the right to ordinance that actually is equal and applies to everybody? If you're going to write an ordinance, if you think you... This does apply equally to uh, everybody. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> Except that the property owned by the tribe, they can decide, just like you can decide on your individual free, simple owned property who can come onto your property as a guest, the tribe can decide the same thing. Yeah, but the way you get it set up, there is only one, one group that's going to decide, is it on tribal property and can it stay there? And if it can stay there, how much money are you going to get for it? And there's no real recourse. Period. And, and tribal members can do anything there, but non-tribal members can't do anything there without paying for a permit, a license, mitigation, or remove their structure. That's or because it's tribally owned. That's correct. Well, it's tribally owned well, Thailand. But it's your interpretation. Well, just two points on that. First of all, tri tribal members have no greater authority to build structures on tribal Thailands than non-members. They need the same lease completed within the last year. And so that's what we're going to rely upon. Um, there is a process in the ordinance. If someone disagrees with that line, or if, you know, 10 years from now you think the line has changed and it's not any good anymore, to come forward with evidence and present that evidence. And to to that would be, It would pre be presented initially to the planning department. The Swedish planning department. Yeah. And then if you don't agree with them, is there a record? Yeah. There's what well, reports to the Senate, to the tribal uh, Senate. To the Senate. Would we'll go to the Planning uh, Commission to the Senate. Of which non members do not have a vote. There's yeah. no vote. And, and there's no I mean your, your control that's you know so, so someone's someone has to make an initial decision about this. I mean it, it's you know the yeah. the other side would be to say let the upland property owner decide where his property line is and, right. and, and we'll just accept that. Why We're trying to come up with a process and if there's a agreement, you know if, if there's a, a boundary dispute, then we're going to have to find some way to resolve it if it doesn't get resolved through the process in the ordinance. Um, but there's, no there's got to be, you know, there's, there's got to be some starting point for defining where I these lines are. I understand the starting point. I don't understand the ending point. There's no place in here where a representative form of government is allowed for non tribal people, period. There is nothing at all, and it's wrong. It's not equal. It's not fair. It's just wrong. I kind of, I kind of believe that how my ancestors would really think about the language that is being said. You know, in this room today, you know, I um, get a thought that our ancestors were here long before any of this has ever occurred, yes. and to respect those lands and those waters. And you are helping along that way to understand what road we're going to go down 
And I feel that the way the, the way this is going to turn is in a, in, a, in a good way. We work together. You know, I I truly believe that the name that I carry is from my ancestor, Walecha. Deeply, I respect that. Deeply, I respect you people for showing your concern. We have to work together on this to protect what is here. Thank you. You know, I, I'm gonna, I don't think we're trying to not protect what's out there. That's not the purpose of our comments of the day. You know, I think it's a question of ownership, and I think that's been brought up, and I'll use an example because I'd like a response, but I'm a homeowner in Shorewood, and part of our Shorewood community, there's a couple of parcels that are in that area in question between high tide and low tide, and they are actually parcels that are recorded in the state of Washington, and it sounds like unilaterally, the tribes are saying, no, those aren't legal, we're going to take them back and put them in this thing called tight lands that they believe they own. I mean, I don't think anybody's trying to destroy the environment out there. That's not what we're here to do. But I guess I'd like to you know, have you respond to those things that are actually deeded property recorded in Skagit County that says that is not tribal property. Um, the um, first of all, you know, uh, the purpose of this is to get comments and input. So, uh, you know, we do appreciate all the comments. You know, critical or, or not. Anybody has anything good to say? Feel free to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, but comment on what he said. I think the beaches around here are beautiful. Great. Um, so, um, and you know, the, 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 we are. You know, this is a process which started with development of a draft. There was an initial hearing before the Planning Commission about a month ago. Um, there was almost no turnout for that, so the Planning Department said, well, we need something, we need, you know, give people another opportunity. So that's why this meeting was scheduled. There'll be another meeting before the Planning Department. Planning Department or Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the Senate. If the Senate, the Senate will have a, a meeting, they'll act on it. And then this will also go to the Bureau of Indian Affairs for approval before it gets into place. So we're kind of working our way through this process and, and you know, part of it is, is getting input like this. How long do you expect uh, that process to take? Um, well, I can speak up until it goes to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm trying to. I'm not going to hold you to it. We just After that, a it's ballpark here. So, so I a think, month, six I think, months, No, I think that the idea is another planning commission. Let me, let me, yeah, let me address that. Yeah. So, uh, I, I work with the Planning Commission on things, ordinances and things like this. So basically we, we started with one initial work session with the Planning Commission, then went to this meeting here and we have a public comment period open. The intent is following this meeting we would collect all the comments and report back to the Commission, schedule uh, an actual public hearing on the ordinance with the Planning Commission at that point, in which anybody is invited to. We will get out public notice on the date of that hearing, you know, when that's scheduled. Uh, following that hearing, then the Planning Commission would make their recommendation to the Senate. It would then go to the Senate for approval. The Senate approves it, it then goes to the BIA. Right. And so, you said something about you're going to mail out notice of that meeting? Yes. For, for everybody who here, signed up here, up. we can make sure that everybody's notified. I think you guys didn't answer my question. I no, I, 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 I don't think you answered my question. I think you went laterally. You no, 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 I, I just said you haven't answered the question yet. Well, well, okay. we got, you know, we're getting questions on top of each other. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, that's sorry. One, one at a time, ask yeah. the question. Okay. Um, so um, I, I think, as I explained before, that the tribe believes it owns in, or that all of the tidelands surrounding the reservation are held in trust by the United States for the tribe and that that's been true since 1855. Um, there's, there's one parcel that the tribe conveyed up on Turner's Bay, which is no longer held in trust for the tribe. It's now privately held. Um, the state of Washington, um, after it became a state in 1889, so after the treaty and after the executive order clarifying the reservation boundaries, issued deeds for Two or three or four, I don't you know, I don't know the exact number, but there were a limited number of deeds issued for Tidelands parcels. Deeds or and 
in our view, the state was conveying land that it didn't own. So that, that's a legal argument that needs to be proven. It's not something that the tribe can uniformly go, we don't believe it's correct, we're going to just take over and do it. Well, I, well, I think it needs to be settled in the courts. If well, it, you, you may be right about that, but the tribe, you know, the tribe may choose to act on what it believes its ownership rights are, just as you may act on what you believe your ownership rights are. And if we run into each other, then at some point we may end up in court. Yeah, Mark, let me, let me take a quick shot at something here for everybody's benefit. I think there's a few basic questions that people have. One is on the ownership issues, and those are obviously more complex and going to take some time to sort out, perhaps. The other questions that a lot of people have is just general, if you live out there, you live out there you've been using the beaches, how does that affect me? I think those are easier questions to answer. Can I ask the question wait, wait, wait. first and back up? Well, yeah. let me just, there's a lady here who's been asking, yes. trying to get a question oh, for a while. Okay. So. My question is, we have been paying for the Thailand rents every year at, in Shorewood. We pay it as a bill that comes to us and we pay it to the state. That's for Thailand. Now, stop paying it. What? We're paying it. That's an unofficial comment from the guy who's <laughs> not representing the tribe as an attorney. You stop paying it. But, no, we sorry. don't stop paying it. <laughs> Correct. What's going to happen is you are going to go to litigation with the state because they are collecting that fee from us right now. And so it's, it's a question on who owns it, but they've been collecting that for 35 years. Or, no, longer than that, since 35 in, in that area. And so that's something that you'll be going to contention with the state. Yeah, well, I, we're not going to sort out, you know, I, we're not going to have a meeting of the minds on that issue, okay? We, under, we understand your position. We understand that there was, there was a deed issued in the Shorewood area. Um, the, the, it's not clear to us what's being assessed and what's being paid, but we understand, we, we do understand the issue that you're raising. We do understand what you're saying. Um, I, all I can, all I can express is the hope that you understand what we're saying, that, that we believe that those lands were reserved for the tribe in the treaty, that the state had no right to dispose of those lands, and that, that whatever the state did in 1928 when it issued that deed can't take away something that belonged to the tribe and that was reserved by the tribe in the federal treaty. That, that's our view. Um, I, you know, so we, we have a difference of views, and as we move forward, you know, this is something we're going to take into consideration is the fact that you have, you have a different view about that particular parcel. Mark, let's, let me ask you, do you, any, any of you have questions, just simple questions on can I go out and I walk the I got a real beach? simple question. I want to back up a little bit. Did the folks of the tribe get together and vote on doing this, or did it just come from the Senate? Um, the, the, the Senate hasn't acted on this yet. This is going to be, if it goes to the Senate, it will so go then a recommendation from the planning department to the Senate. The planning department's the one that started it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they started. Okay. So then the people, the folks in the tribe don't even know what's going on. Well, they, know what, they know what you know. No, I'm asking. What happened is that several years ago, about four years ago, the Senate expressed to staff that it's very concerned about the fact that there are encroachments on lands that the tribe owns um, and asked staff to come up with a comprehensive plan to deal with that issue. As a result of that, the planning department and other tribal staff have come up with this proposal. And once it goes through the planning commission, if it's recommended by the planning commission, it will go to the Senate. But the Senate directed staff to go down this path. The Senate has been updated about this path at multiple points along the okay, way. Okay, so it's not the tribe, it's it's the Senate and, and you and the planning department. It's the doing this. The Senate is the tribe. The Senate is the tribe. Let's, let's, I know there's a question here. Was there one, was there a question oh, here first? Well, um, this is all a draft, and so right now I'm looking in the green area. Yeah. So, What's the guarantee that you guys aren't going to say, oh, we changed our mind? And then all of a sudden, green becomes yellow. Yeah. And do we get some sort of a guarantee, or do we get to see the final draft? You'll hear, yeah, do we get a say in this? You'll, you'll hear the discussion at the planning commission. No. Is there you'll hear a discussion at the planning commission, and then you'll see what the Senate decides. So do we no. get to come to your planning commission? Yes. 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 It's it's is there public input allowed at your 
meeting. Yeah, the yeah. planning commission. Planning yeah. commission did publish these. Let me paper. let me explain. We, we publish all our notices in the Laconer Weekly News. That's our official <laughs> newspaper for public notices in this uh, area. Yeah. Better start. Yeah. So, <laughs> in this case, you know, we we have we have contact information for those who have commented. We will certainly make sure that everybody who's put their name and address down, we will contact them. We'll send notices out. So. Let's let's go. I know there's a comment here and then back there, and people who haven't talked yet. So I'll, I'll get back to you quick. <laughs> well, that's okay. But they've been waiting. <laughs> I think we we put that 30-day comment period in, so we'd have a comment period. We will certainly accept any comments that you want to give us. Certainly, up and up through the planning commission hearing, which that date hasn't been set yet, because you know they want to get the input, take a look at it, and then set a hearing date. You know, once they've had a chance to you know figure out whether they want us to make changes in response to things. So um, the plan. We will certainly include anything in the record that we receive, uh, including, I think we're taking notes tonight, which will be included in the record. Anything you want to uh, email us uh, and, or, um, you know, or written uh, comments or anything you want to give to us, we'll include everything in the record uh, that will go to the Planning Commission uh, that is received up to, we should probably do a cutoff like this. Day before the planning commission or yeah, something. I'm not sure when the. We're going to have to. Okay, so there'll, there'll, be, there'll be more opportunity. Yeah. 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 Okay, I live in uh, Sherwood. Uh huh. And I was talking to one of the gentlemen and I asked him, you know, about, you know, being able to walk down on the beach and go fishing. And he said, not a problem. You can still walk down on the beach and go fishing. And then I walked around the corner and I see activities always prohibited. Fishing is one. So. I don't quite understand. It's either always prohibited or I can fish. Can fish. And it doesn't designate color on this. No, side. it doesn't. It just says always prohibited. Always prohibited. And you can fish in open water. It, yeah, you can. No, okay. he asked if he could fish on the beach. Yeah. I have to stand here. Okay. So that's like. I, 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 who I'm, I'm sorry. I understood you. How about walking our kayaks down the beach and launching them? You, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, but who's to say we can do it or not? What makes them the rulers? This is ridiculous. I don't think that's the correct reading. It's always prohibited. Yeah, I read it too. Prohibited activities. Yeah, yeah. Prohibited activities. You're not the rulers of our beach. Well, okay, okay, wait a second. You are not the ruler. Let's do the fishing question and then. And then we'll do the kayaking. We, I, don't, I feel like we're kind of losing people here. Um, do, um, the fishing. The fishing question is. Excuse me. The, the the way the draft ordinance reads is the the only people who can fish when they're on the tide lands are tribal members, and the reason for that is that you know as as you know. Um, th this tribe, like most Puget Sound tribes, um, made its living fishing. Fishing is central to its culture. It gave up almost all of its land in 1855 in its treaty, and it reserved a small reservation. And one of the things it secured was the exclusive right to use the reservation for fishing and other natural resource gathering purposes. And so the tribe's policy um, has long been that within the reservation on tribal lands, um, fishing is only open to tribal members. And the, the ordinance carries that policy forward. Um, the concerns about that can be, you know, again, you know, we're, the part of this is to hear your concerns, but it, that's, that's where that comes from, and that's why it's there right now. You know, I thought I read in this uh, draft ordinance that says that 
people could fish in those waters as long as the boat was launched in a, from a lawfully, you know, from a lawful uh, boat ramp. You know, so it doesn't say that we can't fish there if we're in a boat that was launched from some place other than along these tideland areas that you've got marked in red and green. So if I launched my boat from the Connor and went down to Slough, came over here and fished in this purple area, it said, I think your thing says I can do that. And and that's I think you know, that's the Washington State Fisheries that says that I can do that. And I think your draft ordinance is the same thing, but I can't fish from the from the land right. in that area. That's what well, you're saying. Fine. So, well, 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 you can't well, fish within the okay. boundaries of the reservation on, uh, like, tribal land. Right. In a boat? So, in boat? Well, if you were beyond, well, I mean, if I'm you're beyond extreme. Fish, well, I mean, that's actually not right. Okay. The Department of Natural Resources all owns all water waters, as well as the Coast Guard. No. And, and excuse me, they do right up to the shoreline. No. And, and so, as long as you're in the boat and not on the beach line, you can fish wherever you want to. As long as the season is over, that's legal, and I know that for a fact. So, okay, we have we have a disagreement, but we understand what you're saying. We understand that there's confusion in the ordinance about where fishing is. Well, you guys spelled it out in there, so. Um, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, I just let, let, yeah, yeah, yeah there's, let's take people who haven't had a chance to ask you parts of what, what you're talking about here. The, okay. uh, one of the things that's referenced is uh, a lease and uh, fees for the lease. How do, you, how do you calculate figures for that lease? We do it. What, I mean, what numbers? Do you we do it consider? essentially the same way the state does Thailand leases. Um, you look at the unimproved value of the uplands, um, and then you then you use a ratio, so you know, you know, the percentage, the, the amount of land you're talking about that's being leased compared to, you know, so you take a, you know, a, a pro rata share of the uplands, and then you reduce it by a factor. So it's not the upland value, but it's a percentage of the upland value. Okay. And there's a formula that comes out of, of state law that the state uses for its leases. Well, that's fine. So if that's the case, will my property taxes be decreased dollar for dollar? If that goes into effect, I live on the wall down there. So I'd like to know if, you, if, if that's the case, well, I mean, if I'm paying for it, will my property taxes go down for that? No. <laughs> okay, so that, that was kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> so, that's the case. so here's the other question, and I'm going to be a little flippant with this, but you know, if it takes a tribal number, can you just actually make all of us just honorary members? There you go. I mean, as long as we're dealing with the Socratic method of standing up here, I was, I'm a lawyer too. So, I mean, I'm just wondering how, how do we resolve this in a peaceful, reasonable way? But it sounds like this is so, I mean, this is creating so much contempt and it's creating so much discord. Is there a way to work this out, or are you just trying to get? I mean, it's like, what, what are you trying to accomplish? We're fighting over some rocks. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we're all respectful it, of our beaches. We, we pick up garbage. Stuff. We take care of them. We I, love them. I, 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 okay, let's 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 can I just sense that? Yeah. The, 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 the young lady. The young wait, 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 wait. Let him finish that. Oh, sorry. Because where does it stop? Does it stop with can I cut a tree down? Or do I can I plant a tree? Is it not indigenous? Is it in, I mean, you know, these things are starting to get weird and ridiculous. I mean, it's getting beyond acceptable. <coughs> I mean, you're gonna go on to get yourself another job, another firm, you'll be in Boston, maybe you'll be down in Dallas, you know, whatever the case may be. You got your, you know, that's a great, you know, thing that you just did here. But what, what now that we've accomplished it, what are you what, where do we go from here? It sets a precedent that I don't like. Okay. And I don't think anybody here would disagree with that. Correct. Yeah. Right. Can I just respond briefly? And then I want to take a question or a comment from over here. Um, um, first of all, we, we are interested in discussion of these issues and trying to resolve them. Um, and you know, civil discourse would, would help that process. Um, and we're trying to be, trying to approach this that way. And we're trying to listen and provide opportunities for comment. Um, the, the tribe has had experience where tribal members have been excluded from tribal tidelands. 
including tribal Thailand, such as those on Kicket Island, that were extremely important um, culturally, historically, um, to tribal members. And they were chased off by dogs and people with guns. Um, the tribe <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I finish? Can I finish? Good luck. Um, I, I, I just, I mean, he wouldn't let us go very far. He shot at everybody. <laughs> the tribe also, there, that, that it wasn't the only incident where tribal members have been excluded from Thailands, and it's not the only place it's happened. Um, in addition, there are encroachments on tribal Thailands, which have adverse environmental effects that the tribe is concerned about, and it's looking for ways to comprehensively address these issues. Um, the ordinance is designed to let people continue to do most of what they've already been doing as far as use of the tide lands. Um, that's why these areas were, were designated um, in places where there are upland owners that use the tide lands. There was an effort to designate those areas and keep those open for, for usage. But they can so, be changed whenever you, when, at, at the time of swim. A lot of things can be changed. I, I, I understand that concern, and we're going to need to think about that and see if there's a way we can address that. Um, but but the, the, the objective here was to come up with a comprehensive approach that addresses the tribe's concerns, but also accommodates uses that people are making and expectations that people have. Um, so that that's that's where this is coming from, and that's kind of where initially said. And there's some nice, right? You like it's nice. tribes nationwide and their rights and the things that were taken away from them. However, things that happen on that beach that are specifically directed, uh, that happen by the tribe, that are left behind, um, a boat trailer, um, net after net after net, um, masses of amounts of fish left on the beach. See, that's not good stewardship, to my way of thinking. So when you when you say to me. We want this land because we want to have a, a great stewardship and it's all about what the Indians love and the environment, then do that. Speak to that. Now, the only reason I say this is because I know you'll go to the planning committee and it goes back to the Senate. And this is who the people that need to hear this kind of comment. Because we look at this, we clean it up. We help with it and we, you know, I mean, a dozen brand new crab pots left on the beach. I never have been able to make sense of that. So things like that are some of what sits under people's saddle, the bird that's under people's saddle, and I think it needs to be at least spoken about. And I'm not, you know, making a bunch of noise about it because I, I think that there have to be adjustments made, and compromises made, but this is one of them that can be certainly addressed very easily. But when um, one afternoon when I saw four young uh, tribal youth drop a trailer off at the boat launch and run. You know, that was very disrespectful to the people of Shorewood that live right there and have to look at this every day. And it's still there. So, anyway, that's just a comment that I, that I can voice for Shorewood. Sure. Yeah. I have a question. What are you doing with the state right now? Because some of this you address, there's conflicts with things from the state. Before this gets into a draft, are you working with them to work out problems and to address issues of what they feel is ownership, et cetera. It, it seems like it's backwards if you go the other direction it, and you pass something that then goes into big legal battles. Yeah, it's, it's a, our understanding from, we, we haven't talked to the state about this ordinance, but we've talked to the state about disputes over a particular parcel from the past. And it's our understanding that the state does not, it's not the state's position that it was authorized to convey timelines. Um, that they're not taking the position that they own those Do you those have that lands. written where we can, as well as the other things that you listed off, where the um, treaties, et cetera, do you have those all so that we can get a packet of those so that it, we can read and sure. see what sure. has been said? I think we're good. Okay. Maybe you can add a note on your address. Okay, sounds good. Yes. Would the consider just giving all right. residents of the reservation equal rights? Uh, uh, you know, the, the, as far as I know, they'll consider anything, but, uh, but uh, uh, how long they would consider it? <laughs> Sir? Yeah. Just, no, no. I still want to try to get everybody get a chance. I was reading the planning, planning report in 2007, and I thought it was very interesting. But, you know, out of that 10,000 
acres that the reservation originally incorporated. <coughs> 2,500 that was sold legally to you know to all of us non-tribal members. So that's one quarter of the reservation <coughs> that now belongs to us. So I think we deserve some kind of uh, say in what the what happened within the reservation. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Finally. Well, the young lady mentioned how this started. I guess the Senate told the planning. The, I guess what the young lady mentioned how this started was uh, something like the planning department was told by the Senate, we need to get a vehicle to deal with uh, encroachment on the tidelands and structures on the tidelands. I understand that. Okay. Why did it get from that to we can't walk on the beach kind of thing? I, I don't understand where that whole other part of it, why don't you just have an ordinance that deals with structures and encroachment on the tidelands? Why, did, why do you have all this other stuff where you need a lease to walk on the beach and stuff like that? I don't get that. Well, okay. that's, that's something that we'll get back and think about. I mean, there, there are different pieces of this, and you're right. It's, you know, there's a section that deals with the encroachment issue. There's another section that deals with other things that can happen on the tidelands. Um, our understanding was that the Senate wanted kind of a comprehensive approach to regulating and managing the tidelands. And, and as I said, the goal here is, is not to say you can't walk on the beach, it's to say you can walk on the beach. But, yeah. Uh, under your I control. I'll comment a little bit further, and I, 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 I think that there's a probably not a person's room that, that I know of that, that doesn't value these beaches tremendously. Uh, our property's been in our family since 1946. We have always taken great care of the property, and I walk this beach, and I very seldom see anybody that doesn't take good care of the beach. And, and I'm just kind of curious as to what you're getting at. If it's if it's a fish thing, and we're trying to create more fish around, I'm sure that a lot of folks in here would be encouraged to try to enhance the fish, whether the tribe is willing to bring in rock for you or, or something that works. It's been done in other parts of the country. But the injustice of what I see is, just north of Highway 20, there was a huge amount of land that was filled in, some of the, the most important fish habitat in the area, both south and north of Highway 20, of which now there is a gas station on, there's a casino, there's a big parking lot. And it seems to be a little bit unjust here that we're trying to fix just a little bit of our shorelines where that was incredibly, incredibly sensitive land. And what do you do? Do you do the same thing? Do you move your casinos, your gas stations, everything off, and create good land in there or not? We have a small part that we're trying to play. We're trying to be good stewards of the land. We are, and we're not asking you to do anything different. And I don't think anybody is. So I, don't, I guess I don't understand what's the purpose of the lease? Where's the money going to go? What's it for? It doesn't make sense to me. I just, I, um, we've been. Good stewards, good neighbors for 66 years. And well, I, don't, why not? I, I don't think in the Shorewood area there's going to be any leases. We don't live in the Shorewood. I mean, I don't know which area you're talking about. But we got a lot of Well, this whole comprehensive plan doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's not That's, just there. It's the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing, not just Shorewood I mean, or anywhere. Go, right up, but if you go up the channel, the village side is littered with boats and everything. I mean, and, and you're saying that there's a swim dock out there somewhere that's that's encroaching on fish and wildlife? Yeah. Clean up the, all of it, not just one part of it. Clean up their own backyard before you clean up somebody else's backyard. Yeah. I mean, it's modestly. Okay. Uh, can I make a comment yes. because I think I have to leave? Okay. That um, I chose to live on the reservation. I'm very privileged to live here. I'm an environmentalist. I appreciate the tribe's efforts to be environmentally and ecologically correct. And I think I see that particularly with the purchase of Ticket Island and what you're doing there to keep the, and I keep where the, where the smolt come in, estuaries and so on. I mean, you're doing a great job and I'm privileged to be living here. And I think that Personal issues need to be put aside for the benefit of our general community. Okay, yeah. Um. <laughs>
<clears throat> I understand the Department of Interior has a, something called a land status report. And are these submerged lands listed as on that uh, land status report as belonging to the Summers Tribe? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, I, I know that, that the Department of the Interior has reiterated its position that the land, the tide land surrounding the reservation are held in trust for the tribe on many occasions. Many occasions. I'm uh, Greg Nelson, the Shore uh, Association, the Association, and uh, I was just curious, is is the Shorewood deeded beach or the deeded tidelands, is that a dis disputed claim? Then? Is that what we're saying? Is that what you're saying? Or not? Well, I think that's what we're both saying, because we, we think the tribe owns it, and, and the Shorewood group thinks So that means, that, that does that mean that you're going to try to get it deeded back to the tribe, or what does it mean? I, I, it doesn't mean that. Um, it means that, that at least the way we're planning on proceeding right now, the ordinance would apply that piece of land. And if there's a dispute about that, that would have to get worked out at some point. You know, and, and there's 44 lots there. And when they made that, when they made that development, um, the tidelands were included with the, the piece of land that you're buying, right? So there was values associated with that. And that's what we're getting at as far as tax-wise. We're being taxed on the extra, extra values of each one of those lots. You know, and if we lose it, I mean, guess what happens to our, to our values of property? 